everyone, this is Impulse, and welcome back to the SMB server. And I am chilling at spawn, because guys, this is my new favorite area. Check this place out. Craziness has happened here. Craziness has happened. I obviously didn't do this, guys. You know me. I don't build this well. <laughs> I am not a builder. I am a technical automation type person. I can't build like this. This was actually the brilliant work of two of our newest members on the SMB servers, Intac and the Duke Minecraft. And I think the Duke came up with this design. Zintac did the arches back here and the pathways and maybe some of the shrubbery. I don't know. But uh, yeah, oh, geez, spawn's looking great. And as you can see, the point board hasn't changed. That's because we didn't get a chance to live stream this week, so we didn't do a competition. Thanks to some jerk face DDoSers that took down Twitch the night we were supposed to stream. Thanks a lot for that, jerks. <laughs> and sadly, you can see the relic chilling here on the blue block. So let me explain something first. The way the relic works is if there's nobody on the server from your team, and say, say you have it, nobody else is on, you're about to log off, you're expected to come put the relic down. That way, next time somebody logs on, they can pick it up. And that way, you know, as long as somebody's on the server that belongs to the team that's ha that's holding the relic or that's in possession of the relic, um, that, you know, it'll be held by somebody at most times, right? And so right now, that nobody is on, actually, because like usual, I'm recording late at night my time, so <laughs> I'm on by myself. But uh, if a blue team member was on, they would be expected to come grab this, and then I'd have a chance at it. So a lot of you are probably wondering, well, if there was no competition, the last time you saw the relic, it was in my hands, I, uh, I got killed. <laughs> I got killed. It was pretty tragic. And I'll go into that story here in a little bit. I'm going to save that um, because it goes along with something I was up to, and I don't want to spoil that just yet. But uh, anyway, props to you, Duke and Zintac. This place is looking beautiful. All right, guys, I'm going to head over to the base. And I got 35 levels on me, so I might as well spend some of them uh, because I'm not wearing any pants. <laughs> I need pants. And uh, I, pants are not something you can trade for, at least diamond pants. Not something you can trade for with the villagers anymore, which is sad, but I, I understand. The balance is necessary. So we'll go ahead and get ourselves some pants made up. Finally have some diamonds. You'll know why here in a bit. And we'll see what we get. What are we going to get today? Spend three of these guys. I hope it's something decent. Well, okay, so we know the pants are going to be unbreaking three. And hopefully something else. We'll see. And if not, I can always save them and combine them with something better later. Okay, let's see what we got. What just... Oh, <laughs> i got to click the thing. I know how to do this. Oh, there we go. That's not bad. I will take that any day of the week. Protection four, unbreaking three. There we go. Now I got fully enchanted gear. It looks like my boots are starting to hate life. Got, got nice boots. Protection 4 and Feather Falling 4. Unbreaking 3. So, okay, maybe they'll last a little bit longer. And those of you wondering, probably saw I only went from 35 to 32. I know this is still a question, big question people are having. On 1.8, you only spend, you still need to get to level 30 to get all three of those uh, tiers that I had available when I put in three lapis. But once you once you spend it, it only takes three three levels away. So one per tier is how it works. So okay. So oh, I didn't show you this. This has changed a little bit. I, I kind of I took away that fence that was here. I'm trying to fill this in. I was running out of materials, but I want to flatten this out so the guys can use this as whatever. You know, you can see they got all sorts of farmland and stuff going on back here. So I want to give them back this this area as long as they don't cover up my skylights to the villager system it will be all right so but i did move the drop and we'll go down here and things have changed guys things have changed i've been busy <laughs> been digging this place out i've been digging this place out like mad and that's because i got new plans got new plan well i never really had plans to begin with so um plans i just i have plans now <laughs> i guess you could say let me get rid of this guy get out of here it ain't for you Oh, my villagers. Don't touch them. We need them. <laughs> we like our villager trading. That's actually a big part of the plan, guys, is I am going to kind of focus on villager trading. Um, and the idea for me is I want to build farms that are made for trading, basically. So if they trade for it, I will try to automate it 
Um, that way we can just have lots of emeralds and trade for, you know, whatever gear we can get from them, which there's a lot of good stuff. You can get diamond picks, you can get diamond swords, you can get diamond chest plates. Um, so there's still a lot of good stuff that we can get from them. Oh, and books. Books are going to be very important. Um, that way we can just use the librarians to get whatever enchantment books we actually want and apply them to uh, the gear we have. So in order to do that, I needed a bunch of area for all the farms I'm going to be doing. And what I decided to do was basically utilize the spawn chunks that I have available. So within my team's border, which is right here, this wall, um, anything on this side is actually belongs to the gold team. This is the border. On this side is the neutral zone. Over here is, is our border, um, is our side. Um, but we actually have some spawn chunks from that wall to that back wall are all spawn chunks. And then all the way down to, from that wall to that wall are all spawn chunks. So my plan is basically to dig this whole thing out from bedrock basically to about layer 40. And that's just because I want to dig out the slime chunks as well. And then we're going to build what we are going to call the facility. And the facility is basically, think about it like an underground hidden layer, Area 51 style. You can see we're going with the iron blocks, not just because, you know, iron blocks right now is probably the material we have the most of, but because it's nice and bright and underground, you want to stick with bright kind of blocks. Going to have a lot of lighting. And I'm talking about doing sea lanterns, so that may bring up some fun farms later, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, so, yeah, yeah, we're going to have a lot of lighting, a lot of light colored blocks in here. Uh, got to dig this whole thing out, and I've been making a lot of progress, half slabbing to try to keep it spawn proof as we go, um, but they're still sneaking in. Those guys are sneaky. So anyway, that's the plan. Um, but before I came up with this plan, I decided I wanted to build this, a slime farm. Perfect timing, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the party. Um, so you can see here, I got just a standard slime farm. I got a little lava separator. It's going to break them down into medium. Mediums are going to break down into small. Uh, a couple of them will get burned up in there just because I got a bedrock piece that was kind of in the way. But um, then they make their way over here. They're going to go up the ladder and fall down. And slime. <laughs> slime balls for days. Yeah, we're starting to get a lot of them. And that's because we got quite a lot of floors built. Let's see, does this ladder go all the way up? Oh, it does. Oh, let's go on top. I haven't been up here. Um, I actually built the first couple layers, and then Zintac came along and helped me out tremendously by building the rest. So let me go up here and see what he's done. Hopefully there's a nice glass roof. There is. Perfect. Ooh! He's even done the sea lanterns already on top. That is amazing. Looks great. So you can see that cool floor pattern, nice and bright, so no hostile mobs spawn. Um, that's not the case all the way down, though. We need to put some more in the pillars because these corners can get dark, but, uh, and then about there and there. So anyway, yeah, we need, we're going to need more of those sea lanterns, <laughs> a lot more. But you can see getting, getting great rates here now and lots of layers built. Zintac did a good job building this up, collecting the materials for it and doing all these glass walls. So thank you, Zintac. You guys might be able to catch some of that in action. Uh, I'm not sure if he recorded him working on it or not, but uh, I'll put his channel in the description if you want to see uh, his Let's Play and see him working on that or whatever else he's been working on. He's uh, he's on the server quite a bit and been a good help, great help for the gold team. So anyway, yeah, Slime Farm. That's that's the Slime Farm. We have one now. Uh, you know, 1.8, you, you need Slime Blocks. They're awesome. You know, I have some big plans for some Slime Blocks. So uh, anyway, that's that. So you can see here, this is actually... Uh, not the first floor. The first floor is going to be up here. So this is actually going to be the first floor. And what the space is between here and there is just kind of a maintenance area. So all redstone and things like that can go down below and I can hide it and stuff like that. And yeah, basically just going to start building farms all over the place. All right, so enough show and tell. That's all the work I've done off camera. And that happens a lot, guys. It's just the way kind of my life is structured. My my ability to record when the house is quiet is, I, I don't have a lot of that. <laughs> I don't have a lot of times where the house is quiet. I got three kids, you know. Uh, one of them's here all the time because she's two. And she's always making noise. So I can't record whenever I feel like it. I have to kind of wait till everybody goes to bed. And because of that, um, I'm able to play Minecraft during the day here and there and get things like this done, but just not recorded. So 
Um, that's why you're seeing kind of a lot of progress, but no recordings of the progress happening. And so this is more of a kind of a world tour <laughs> style when we get to it. But apologize for that. That's just the way things are. But I do want to get to today's project right now. You can see I have some weird things happening here. I got some villagers in here, and I got this track, and I got this thing over here. And basically what it is is I need to start setting up the villager trading cells. And these guys are down here, and I kind of wanted a cool way to get the villagers out and then get them into their their trading cells. And so let's go upstairs and let's I'm gonna show you the trading cells first. And then I'll show you what that thing I built is. So it's over here. Basically, my plan right now is to just build a wall of villager trading um, all along here. So you can see this is one cell, and I'm going to put one, just another one, right next to it. So it's kind of like every other uh, block will have a villager in it. And I want one of each, uh, I guess their profession or career. I always get those confused now because they're two different things. Um, but I'll have like, so the you have the armorer, the toolsmith, and the weaponsmith. Those are all careers of the blacksmith profession or I have that backwards I don't know um, but I'm gonna have basically every type different type of villager that's in 1.8 in their own cell all the way along and we'll probably have a ton of librarians because they're each gonna have their own set of books and we're gonna want to have basically almost not almost every book you can get but you know a lot of the good books so we'll have a lot of librarians and I'm thinking um, just to just to make it so it's easy just having them all along this wall and there'll be this nice big corridor. And that way for the farms, there's still you can kind of go in different rooms off to the right and stuff. Um, so that's kind of the plan. But in order to get the villagers in these things from down below, I wanted there to be a cool way to do it. So, okay, first of all, let me explain. There's a chest here, and there's also you know, there's a glowstone, so we don't have to worry about mob spawning. But then sometimes you're trading, you accidentally do that, and that stinks because then you can't get your items back, you know? Uh, so what I did is I put a hopper there, and you can see there, and just get 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 those items right back. So whether you throw them in there or not, on accident, you can get them right back. So that's why that's in there. And then I got the stairs, and I got this this uh, iron gate here or iron trap door, it's called, um, just to make sure that none of the zombies or the kid zombies can get in. I'm really hoping the chicken jockeys can't jump this and get in. I don't think they can. Uh, but I know they're they're smaller than this gap here, so we'll have to see about that. In fact, I may end up doing that just to be safe. Um, did give them a little headroom here because of the, the mechanism here that I'm about to show you. So let's go take a look at that. You can see this is the sorting system. I probably move, well, I'll definitely move all this stuff once the floor goes in. Um, all this is just for storing as we dig, so all that will get sorted out. But here, let's go ahead and demonstrate this thing. And this isn't perfect yet. I just wanted to get a working concept going. So get villager here, hopefully. Come on, get in there. Oh, put that glass in there just to make sure. If zombies get in there, they could get those guys through the corner. So just wanted to protect. Okay, good. We got a, a cleric probably. Yep. All right, go ahead, buddy. Go ahead. We'll, we'll have to push him out of here. That's something I'll probably want to fix too. Get a little button. Um, basically, maybe bring them over to a, a decision area where I can decide if I want to kill them or keep them. Uh, get them up onto this, and right now I got to push them in a little bit. And I can't put a I can't put a rail there because of the way the slime block thing works. So I might have to figure out how to get them more momentum coming into here so that they're all the way on that block without there being a rail. Um, but from there, now what we can do is basically just hit a button, pushes them up. And basically what happened was when I pushed the button, the slime block ejected them up and then these actually pulled back for a couple ticks and then pushed them into the trading cell. And so let's go up there now. He should be in that trading cell. Nice and tight. Let's see. And there he is. So now we have him in our trading cell. So basically if I build one of those mechanisms for every single trading cell along the way, then I'll be able to control um, refilling them if anything ever happens or we decide you know we're sick of them and want to kill them. Mm, 38 flesh for emeralds. It's okay. It's okay. I don't have flesh on me right now. I haven't been AFKing at the zombie farm as much as I used to. So let me let me go down here. I want to show you some of the redstone. 
uh, how this thing works because I literally just designed it just a few minutes before I hit record today. Um, so basically it's fairly simple. You have uh, a piston down there with a slime block on top. These are all furnaces over here just so you know because you need a immovable block for these slime blocks to be able to go up and down um, without kind of getting stuck to the blocks. And then we got the button here that's on a furnace also because it's next to the slime where the slime block will be when it goes up. And then it's going to power this repeater which basically just goes into this pulse shortener and that's going to give a four tick signal now and that's going to go to two different places. You can see there's a line down here which basically just circles back to the piston itself uh, with the slime block that's on the other side of that block there and so that'll shoot you up but we also need to eject or retract I should say those glowstone blocks that were in the trading cell so let me see I might have to stack jump here um, so basically it will turn that torch off and then when that happens, this line turns off, and then that's what retracts these pistons here that have the glowstone on the other side. And then they'll, because it's a, a four tick uh, pulse shorten there, um, basically, you know, within four ticks, it's going to just shoot, cut, uh, open back up, I should say, and push the guy into, into his place. So it works out perfectly. Um, I'm not going to go up there and join him, but uh, it's hard to see, but that's exactly how it worked. So anyway, yeah, now all I need to do is build a bunch more of these, you know, and I'm thinking the way I did the redstone, I'm hoping I did it right, that they'll be tileable. So I can just, you know, do do one there, do one there, one there. So we'll see, make sure that I made it tileable. And uh, I'll build a bunch more up, but first I need to build the actual trading cells up. So I'm gonna go get started on that, and uh, I will be right back after I get a fair amount of cells done. I'm not going to overdo it tonight, um, but I'll get a few cells done and then I'll be back and we'll, we'll build up some more of those launching mechanisms. So I will see you in a bit. Got them all built out. At least uh, 11 of them, I think I counted. So let's go ahead. This is the one we got the villager in. Let's go ahead and test one of these ourselves here. Let's just hit the button, and there we go. And you can see I'm going to have them on carts, so they're going to sit on this rail, and then they'll be stuck right in there. So I, I removed all those just so I could go through and test here. We'll pick another random one here, to, just so you guys can see they're all working. And oop. Here we go. Got a little bit of damage, no big deal though. And yeah, this is pretty cool actually. I'm, I'm pretty excited about how this turned out. Let's do one more. There we go. Yeah, I didn't take any damage on that one. So just the way I was sitting on the block, I think. Anyway, all right, cool. So let me go ahead and put these stairs and iron trap doors back on. I keep forgetting the name of those things. And here we go. Just like, oop. <laughs> Let me get them in the right order here. That might help. Just put it on the side there. Okay. And then maybe we could start putting some villagers in here. That would be good. Uh, like I said, I want to get one of each profession. <laughs> I still don't know what's right. I'll have to look that up. And uh, I don't know. One, sh one short there. Oh, well. Okay. I'll grab that, too, before I get them in. So, all right. What I'm going to do next is basically go go look up uh, all the different professions or careers, whatever they are, figure what out, figure that piece out, and then determine what order I'm going to put them in, and then I'll start getting them out of there. I need to lay down some more rails, and you can see the way I'm going to trigger this is I can actually just do uh, this type of thing, and so if it's down, it's going to lead them into that cell, 
if it's up, it's going to keep going. So I need to put more levers on, more tracks on. And I think for now, I'll just push him into spot and not worry too much. But I just want to get some villagers in there so that uh, we can start trading. So I'm going to go get that list of careers, and I'll be right back. All right, so I did a little bit of research, and it, apparently it is called careers so there's actually 11 total careers now with the villagers and i'll go through my basically labeled each cell and oddly enough that's actually the exact number of cells that i made so uh total coincidence maybe <laughs> all right so we got a farmer a fisherman a shepherd a fletcher a librarian a cleric an armorer a weaponsmith a toolsmith a butcher and a leather worker oh and i'm missing in oh yeah i'm still missing that <laughs> that's okay all right so what do you say we start to round them up before i do i got all these rails in to actually labeled these also so basically if if I uh, put a farmer in here, he'll go up and there's a farmer sign on this one as well so that they correspond to each other. And here's how these work. Basically, uh, as soon as I pull a guy out, when I, when I find out what he actually is, um, I'll come over here and I'll flip the lever on whatever one it actually is. So if it's a farmer, I'll flip that. And that's going to turn the rail and send him in there. And we'll just go down here. If it's a cleric, I'd flip that one. And then you can see it would make it so that they go in that one. So that's how those levers work. So it is manual, but uh, I'm not going to know exactly which villager I have until I pull them out. I thought I saw... Yep. <laughs> oh, how's it going, guy? These guys are still messed up. Look, he's like in the chicken. <laughs> oh, you guys are nothing but trouble. Ooh, oh, he mad. <laughs> oh, chicken's got to go too. Demon chicken. <laughs> All right, let me, uh, let me, okay, I have some carts. Let's go ahead and remove this block here that I put in for safety. And let's see if we can pull some of these guys out. And here we go, I'll see if I can fill up the cells. have it I got one of each going on here farmers in here I got the fisherman nice got the shepherd welcome buddy how you doing Fletcher sweet got a librarian oh, what book you got luck of the C3 okay if I we need to do some fishing I'm gonna come see you got a cleric up in here armor all right, so far so good. Weaponsmith, nice. Toolsmith, there we go. Butcher, and finally the leather worker. All right, one of each career. There we go, 11 total, all sorted. Uh, I definitely have some things to work out with the transportation system. This piece is okay. It's just the whole getting them out of the collection cell. Uh, you probably saw derped up just a little bit, let them out, and chased them around. Yeah, so um, definitely going to need to do some work on the extraction to where I can make it safe for them to be stored in there and yet also safe for me to pull them out when I need to. So 
And then, yeah, having to, like, get them on the track and then run and flip a switch and then come back and push them was no good either. So a couple things yet that I need to work out. But all in all, I'd say pretty successful now. We have our villagers, at least one of each career that we can uh, start trading with. And as we start going through and I start seeing what the trades are, you know, I'll start thinking about, you know, potential farms and things like that. I mean, look at this farmer right now. Uh, he wants carrots. Well, guess what? With this whole uh, iron farm, I should have some carrots uh, because of the villager breeding stuff that's going on. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. See through chess. Yay! <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, so you got a bunch of carrots just from that. And I uh, can use those and stuff for that trading as well. So, um, already getting some of the, the automation happening with these guys with trading. So, awesome. Awesome. I'm excited. And like I said, we'll probably, from here on out, just extend this for librarians only and the different books that we can get from them. But yeah, okay, well guys, it's getting pretty late and uh, I got done what I wanted to get done, definitely, so finally these guys can start trading again on uh, my team and building up the materials and tools they need, so um, I'd say not bad, not bad for the progress this week. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, of course, subscribe. <laughs> and with that said, I will see you guys again next time. Have a good one, everyone.